I'm always late to the news. Uh, what have I missed? So the iPhone 15, we got to talk about this because my, my normal tactic with news videos is I keep seeing stuff and going, oh, wow, that's cool. And then like a week later, after 10 different stories have come out, now I'm like, oh, hey, this I maybe should I maybe make a video, huh? And guess what? You're watching it, kid. So let's get into it. So first of all, we got to talk about Ultra. Obviously, the new Apple Watch Ultra has been much more of a success than I thought it was going to be. And so many have been wondering, well, why not do the same with the iPhone? Why not have some stratospheric, ridiculous tier of iPhone that's an absolute unit, has like a sapphire display, titanium frame, and like a bazillion hours of battery life. Jonas Dehnert came out with this incredible looking concept. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Basically, what you're looking at here is the design cues from the Apple Watch applied to an iPhone. So this thing is an absolute chunky boy, but you can see he's even given it that orange activity button. I don't know if that would make it, but the way that the power button and the volume up and down buttons are sort of sticking out from the case, very similar to the Apple Watch. We have the camera lenses actually recessed because there's a thicker back on the phone that would probably serve for like, you know, protection or whatever. And then the front of the screen, same thing. We have a rounded design, but it protrudes with a titanium frame around the bezel. This looks really good. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I would absolutely make that purchase. However, it does bring into question the, uh, the sort of price creep aspect of all of this because we're just getting kind of close to the point where it's like every couple of years you're dropping two grand on a phone like let's uh let's maybe pump the brakes a little bit here maybe instead of buying an iphone 15 ultra you should just protect your current phone with today's video sponsor case coup the case coup magic stand iphone case combines the benefits of magsafe with a traditional kickstand design what makes this case super interesting is that the MagSafe compatible ring on the back flips out and becomes a kickstand to prop your phone up in a number of angles. It comes in all sorts of colors, including those that match the OEM iPhone finishes, so you can make sure you have a really clean look. And it offers raised 1.5 and 2.5 millimeter raised bezels on the camera and screen for drop protection. So if you want to learn more about Case Coup and the Magic Stand case, check out the link in the description below. And don't forget to use code LUKEMIANI10 if you want to save 10% off your order. So now let's get back to the video. <clears throat> so where was I? Oh yes the non crazy expensive iPhone 15. The regular iPhone 15 plus has leaked. The CAD designs show a dynamic island as well as slimmer bezels and a more rounded back. So overall, this thing looks pretty similar to the current iPhone 14, but you can definitely see that the, uh, the corners here are a little bit more rounded. So that should make it a tad more comfortable. The bezels definitely look slimmer and it's good to see the dynamic island coming to the lower priced models just a year after they came out on the 14 Pro and Pro Max. This is something that we kind of expected or hoped, but as we know with Apple, sometimes they really drag out that trickle down effect. I mean, look at the iPad. The iPad 10 just came out a couple months ago with the quote unquote new iPad design that's already five years old and is possibly getting replaced soon. So it took them that long. So here's a side by side between the 14 plus and the 15 plus. You can definitely see that the bezels are ever so slightly slimmer, but this is nothing that's really crazy. Uh, the biggest thing is going to be the new USB-C port that we see on the bottom. I cannot wait to purge myself of all lightning things. I would legitimately replace my AirPods Max just so that I could have USB-C and just not even worry about lightning anymore. Oh no, no! My keyboard and mouse are lightning. Ugh. It won't end. Gosh, it's been 10 years in the lightning ecosystem. It's gonna be a, a, a long adjustment period, but I'm not complaining. I am happy to see it go. USB-C is the future. I can't wait. Now the dimensions of the new iPhone 15 plus are very similar to what we currently have. Just 0.03 millimeters taller than the 14 plus, just a tiny, tiny bit narrower, interestingly. And we do have a couple extra tenths of a millimeter of thickness. I assume that's all for battery purposes and I will not complain about that. 
Now the downside to this USB-C edition is that apparently iPhone 15 cables without the MFI badge could have data transfer and charging speed limits. And you know what? Yeah, that sounds about right. Apple might not be able to get their royalties from Lightning, but they will still do it for you on USB-C. Might be a universal connection, but that doesn't stop Apple from being universally profit hungry, and they're gonna take advantage of everything they possibly can to make a quick buck iPads don't have this type of authentication chip, but I guess Apple figured that on the iPhone, that market for accessories is just too lucrative. So unfortunately, uh, it is what it is. But let's circle back real quick and talk about the extra thickness that we noticed in the iPhone 15. I've seen some people saying that that's because of the USB-C port. It's thicker than lightning. However, if you actually look at the bottom of a phone, the, there's there's plenty of room there, so I don't think that's it. I think what we're looking at is Apple finally tackling battery life. And this is especially true given a recent report from late last year that talked about the A17 chip focusing more on battery life than performance. TSMC is placing a huge emphasis on power efficiency as compared to performance with this three nanometer process that we're expecting to see in the iPhone 15. That is honestly welcome news because, let's face it, the iPhone doesn't really need to be faster. Even two three-year-old iPhones are faster than the newest flagship Android phones, and they're all plenty fast for running iOS. So really, we don't need the performance. What we could use, though, is more battery life, because the iPhone 14 and the 14 Pro are especially dire. I know a lot of people who keep saying that they can't make it through a full day on a single charge, and that's no good. Now, TSMC has previously said that its 3 nanometer processes offer better performance than 5 nanometer chips while also requiring 35% less power. That is a really crucial figure because when you look at the A16 or the A17 chip, these are only using a couple watts of power. So if you can reduce that by 35%, all of that basically just gets pumped straight into extra battery life. Could you imagine what you would be able to do with an extra 35% battery life? And that's before we even consider that Apple might be making the phones thicker to accommodate more battery. So yeah, I'm expecting the iPhone 15 series to be an absolute battery champ. And heck, you could stop right there. USB-C, better battery life, and a slightly new design. All right, I'm sold. Nothing crazy exciting there, but that's a pretty solid upgrade. Now, unfortunately, Apple does have a couple more surprises for us here, and this one's not quite as welcome. The, the new CADs have shown off an absolutely gigantic camera bump. Our good buddy Ian Zelbo gave us this awesome lineup here that shows an iPhone 11 Pro, a 14 Pro, and then that absolutely massive 15 Pro. Holy cow, look at how much those cameras stick out. I remember when the iPhone 11 Pro came out and we were like, mm, that's a pretty hefty camera bump. Well, I'm eating my words now because it looks absolutely tiny in comparison to this chungus. Hopefully the rumors that this massive bump is gonna be housing a new telephoto lens come to fruition because to be quite honest, the current iPhone setup is not my favorite. The 1X 48 megapixel camera is great, but the minimum focus distance definitely needs work, so that I would like to see improved. But because that lens also gives you a 2x zoom just built in by cropping in on the sensor, it feels kind of silly to have a 2x and an entire separate camera for a 3x zoom. I don't think that's enough of a difference to warrant an entire other camera. So what I would rather see is just make that into like a 10 or a 20x. Android phones have been doing it for a while, and they love to point it out in comments. They love to say, you know, oh, I could take a picture of the moon. I don't know about that. I don't necessarily need moon pictures. I mean, you see it once, you don't really need pictures of it multiple times, but I would absolutely like a 10X zoom camera. I mean, iPhone optical zoom only goes to 3X. Beyond that, it goes real potato quality. So yeah, I'll take that upgrade. Now, what I'm really curious about is seeing what impact the new Apple VR headset has on the iPhone 15 because we've been hearing for a while now that the headset's coming fairly soon and I would imagine this being Apple that it's going to go hand in hand with the iPhone especially right now because the iPhone is the most ubiquitous thing Apple wants the headset to be ubiquitous too so I would expect a lot of features 
probably mostly software that we're just not going to hear about until launch. And that, that I'm very curious about. So all of that remains to be seen. Overall, I'm pretty excited for the iPhone 15 and I'm curious to know what you guys think. So let me know down in the comments below. And of course, thank you all for watching this video. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.